Happy Samhain! My name is Kira and I am the author of Rupert's Tales. I am going to read to you Rupert's Samhain Celebration. Here we go. Rupert the Rabbit found himself very surprised and knew his friend Melvin would think him quite unwise. He was sitting in the lap of a little girl who was crying, although her sniffles had stopped and her tears were finally drying. He had been to this sacred round place many times before and had watched the unfolding of its mysterious lore. On the edge of the forest stood this thick grove of trees, elms, oaks, birch, and cypress with many long knobby knees. And right in the middle of this shady green place was a meadow or clearing, a kind of round space. But now that the weather was cooler and summer had fled, instead of green the leaves were all yellow, orange, brown, and red. It was here that he had come, and even early this time, he didn't want to miss anything or be left behind. He had watched that the people had come by twos and by threes, preparing their feast in their circle underneath the trees. He had been sitting very quietly, very still, hiding behind a tree near the bottom of the hill. He hadn't seen the little girl come from behind. He hadn't heard her make a noise of any kind. She was suddenly right beside him, just right there, as if she had appeared from right out of thin air. She had reached and drawn him into her small arms. Somehow he knew she didn't mean him any harm. She had hair that was dark yellow like some wheat he'd once seen, and she was wearing a ribbon on her wrist that was green. She had pressed her small nose into the fur of his ears, and then it had begun. The quiet sniffles and tears. Rupert remembered others who had taught him interesting things, a pretty white owl and a playful fairy with colorful wings. At Lamas he had met a kind crone who was beautiful in her own way, and a mouse who was his friend even had something important to say. And so Rupert had let the girl hold him and get on with her tears, wondering if she would teach him something about the turning of the year. Oh, how I miss my grandma, he heard her hiccup a bit, then whisper sadly. If only she was still here, I would listen to all her stories gladly. She was funny and smart, gave wonderful hugs, and was very kind, you know. And I hope my mom is right, and it really is as above, so below. Because if it is, they will be glad to have her there, she sniffled and said. She always used to brush my hair. Rupert wished there was something he could do or say to, to take the little girl's sadness and heartache away. But he had no words to give her, none that she would understand, so he lay still, letting her pet him with her soft little hands. Then Rupert watched a woman come walking through the trees and thought just for a small moment, perhaps he should flee. She was somewhere between short and tall as people go, wearing a long skirt and a silver ring on one toe. She looked at the girl and said, We've been looking for you. Come join us in circle and bring your little friend too. Rupert watched the woman's face, not knowing what to think. Then he saw her look right at him and give a little wink. Smiling happy, happily then, he knew it was true. The Lord and Lady had something for him to do. He let the girl carry him without making any noise. In among the circle of people, men and women, girls and boys. He sat quietly and still in the good little girl's lap as the ritual began, trying hard to listen, to make sense of everything and to understand. The woman from before raised her arms and was talking to them all. She told them how each life rises and then how each one must one day fall. She told them of times and ages past and how not so long ago Samhain was a time when people really did reap what they did sow. This was once the time when people of many lands and many ways got everything ready for the long dark nights and the cold short days. There once were no stores to run to for milk or meat or bread. They raised their own animals, wheat and vegetables instead. You may be smart enough to figure out or may already know that winter is not the time when most fruits, grains and vegetables grow. Nor is winter when the sun shines its strongest for hours on end. No, she said. Samhain marks the end the time of year when all the harvests end. The woman called this harvest and this time of year the Feast of Samhain. Smiling, she said the strange word so it seemed to rhyme with plowing. 
While it's true that we here all have stores to visit any time of the day, still autumn must give way to winter, as the wheel of the year has its say. All the gates between the world stand open this night, she said, between the realm of the living and the realm of the dead. There is a boundary, a veil, a barrier, a kind of a line that has always kept one away from the other throughout all time. But at certain times of the year, she went on to explain, the veil becomes thinner, like the moon when it starts to wane. If you look very closely, the whole of the circle is plain to you and me, but if you look quickly, then part of the moon is all that you are able to see. At Samhain, if you look closely, think hard, and keep very still, you might have a special visitor. Some of us surely will. Rupert could feel the little girl's heart beginning to beat very fast, and somehow he knew she was afraid to meet someone from her past. But the woman was wise and must have known what was on the girl's mind. Here in circle you are safe. Spirits who come will be warm and kind. Now think of someone special who has left us in the past year or two. Please close your eyes and open your ears. This is something we all can do. Rupert felt the little girl start to relax and her breathing to slow. He wondered what she would see and just how he would know. He was a rabbit, an animal of the meadows and the forest deep. He knew this ritual was one of the mysteries that only people keep. Still, he closed his eyes too, hoping the girl would find some peace, that the sadness she felt for her grandmother would soon cease. Then he felt a large, warm hand sink deep into his soft fur, and just like that, he knew the girl's name and he could hear her. Becky was praying, asking God and Goddess to listen and to hear, to keep her grandmother safe and to bless the woman she held so dear. She was glad her grandmother no longer suffered any pain. She missed having her to hug and talk to, that much was plain. Suddenly, many pictures of Becky's grandmother went through his mind. Scenes of fun and laughter the two of them had shared together all kinds. Although he really didn't understand what most of them meant, he knew these were the thoughts she carried with her wherever she went. Rupert felt a wave of sadness go through him from tail to ears and knew that Becky was once again ever so close to tears. He remembered Becky telling him about her grandmother brushing her hair and pictured the unfamiliar scene in his mind, thinking as hard as he dared. You can open your eyes now, the woman whispered, her gentle voice very near. Rupert wasn't surprised to see it was she who had laid her hand on his ears. Do you feel better now, she asked, smiling, looking into Becky's eyes. Do you understand that remembering love and laughter is always wise? But I didn't see her the little girl said, her mouth making a frown. Not as a spirit or ghost, or all dressed up in a white flowing gown. Oh, my dear child, you must remember that not everyone always will. Why, we don't even know if your grandmother is in the Summerland still. The mystery of who and what lie beyond this life are not ours to know, but those of us here in the realm of the living must continue to grow. Whether we live only one life or if we live many more, we can always draw strength and love from those who have lived before. If your grandmother came as a spirit or as a memory, if she came as a warmth in your heart or as a ghost you could see, that you remembered and called her to you, those were the things you were supposed to do. There is no right way to do it, nor any way that can be wrong, no matter if you called your loved ones with a prayer, chant, or with a song. Samhain is remembering and holding those who died near in our hearts. Remembering love and laughter we shared is the very best part. With smiles or tears, no matter how or what you do, how you remember those you have loved is up to you. Becky slowly reached up to gently run her small fingers through her long hair. Rupert knew she was remembering her grandmother's tender loving care. He felt oh so very good when Becky hugged him and smiled at last knowing he had helped his new friend and had fulfilled his appointed task. And that's the end. Thanks for listening. Blessed Samhain to you and yours.